Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. I want to break down one of the craziest mob hit attempts you've ever heard of. And it's like something that came straight out of a Hollywood movie. It's like Ben Affleck. Um, it, it's almost like he based some of the town. I know it was based on the bank robbers in Charlestown, but uh, this this just makes you think of the movie The Town. And it, I'm talking about the November 1992 assassination attempt of Vinny Union's Ricciardo, who died recently, a Colombo crime family skipper, who avoided assassination in the most audacious um, mob hit attempt, uh, one of the most if not the most audacious mob hit attempts I've ever really seen or reported on, or at least in modern times. And it, re and it revolves around his beef with a young, at that time, a young up and coming mob superstar named Vito Guzzo Jr. Who is now allegedly a, a, a made guy in the Colombo crime family, allegedly getting his butt in a prison ceremony. He's been in jail for almost uh, 30 years. He'll be out, I think, in 2028. He used to lead the, G the Cafe Giannini crew, which was a, like a mob farm club uh, in Queens that was like a feeder group to the Bananos, the Colombos, and the Lucchese. Uh, and Vito Guzzo, Jr. Uh, was convinced and with, you know, proper foundation to that belief that Vinny Union's Ricciardo had killed his dad in 1987 and had basically stolen his rackets uh, in the Carpenters Union, hence the nickname. Uh, and used it to propel himself in the Colombo hierarchy from made guy to skipper to the guy that was in charge of most of the labor union rackets uh, for a lot of, not just the Colombos, for other uh, other members of, uh, or other uh, five families groups during the uh, 2000s, in the 2010s. And Vito Guzzo was not a made guy at that time. Um, he was a prospect, I guess you could say, somebody that had a lot of, was viewed as having a lot of potential. And he was rightfully very angry that uh, Vito Guzzo Sr., who had had his button at that time for over a decade, had been made, I think, in a 1977 or 78 Halloween ceremony. Um was killed, disappeared uh, on a hunting trip in October 1987, went up to hunt uh, in upstate New York with Vinnie Unions and, and never came home. There was the notion that he was going to try to seek retribution and was immediately like brought in close to uh, two Columbos, one a soldier, a little uh, Dennis Gazzardo, and one a, a capo uh, or acting capo, uh, Fat Patty Catalano. And was him and his brother, Anthony, were, you know, kind of put on ice, chilled out for for uh, five years. And then uh, Gazzardo died on November 1st, 1991. Sorry, I apologize. Gazzardo died on November 1st, 1992. And... Vito Guzzo Jr. waited less than 24 hours to seek vengeance on Vini Union's Ricciardo. So we're talking about Vini Union's passing away at 78 years old, uh, summer of 2024. It's a miracle he he, surv he survived the fall of, of 92, which you, you got to remember is in the middle of all of the Colombo chaos in the in the in the third war in that family in the 1990s. And then there's this hit, which was unsanctioned and had nothing to do with that war, but for a long time people were tying it to the war because it happened at the same time. 
Vito Guzzo Jr. decides to carry out this bold assassination plot while Vinnie Union, Unions is en route to little Danny Gazzardo's wake in Queens. Uh, and it's right where, you know, uh, Middle Village meets Mass Pef, I'm told, on Caldwell Avenue. And Vin Vito Guzzo puts together this hit team that's like something out of the town or heat uh, with uh, Neil's crew and heat uh, where he gets a, a stolen U-Haul truck and then a, um, a crash car. Uh, five or six or five, I think it was five hitmen all wearing hockey masks like Jason from, from Friday the 13th. And they, the, the U-Haul truck knocks uh, Vinnie Ricciardo's car off the road uh, in, in, on Caldwell Avenue. Crash car comes up behind it. He's boxed in. The hit team floods out of the, uh, onto the street and unloads in the, uh, with automatic weapon fire, shotguns, uh submachine guns automatic pistols uh spray the whole car the driver of the car anthony messi is killed vinnie ricciardo and and a buddy of his uh, paulie shivo are wounded but survive and guzzo uh, jr escapes um eventually has to pay the piper for that and uh, and admits to his role in several murders including messi and the attempted murder of Vinny Unions, but you know this was a uh, a legendary hit that people still talk about, and, and Guzzo Junior Junior pulls it off and kills the wrong guy. Um, now, if you go to the Patreon this week, I'm going to give the piece of the story that nobody really knows, um, and, and some of the stuff I've talked about in the last five six minutes um, has been out there before, but. Uh, I'm going to tell you on the Patreon how the issue between Vinny Ricciardo and Vito Guzzo Jr. was solved and who solved it. So check back at the Patreon. But uh, Vito Guzzo Jr. made a name for himself definitely in that in that 1992 uh, attempted hit. Even though it was unsanctioned, it it propelled him. Um, and it, it'll be interesting to see when he comes out uh, what happens. He's 58, 59 right now, but. Uh, he's, you know, he's kind of a legend before his time, you know, uh, check it out on Patreon. The final part of the story, we'll still be giving you all the breaking news here at OG pod on YouTube, like share, subscribe. We got two great interviews that are going to be rolling out, um, in the next couple days to the next week. Uh, two people that have never really spoken before one related to Whitey Bulger and one related to, uh, the mafia in uh, Buffalo, the Magadinos, and uh, what's going on across the border in Hamilton. So check back then. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out. Mm -hmm.